The meeting today is on accumulation, the driving force of capitalism, and it's part of the introduction to Marxist economics. Uh, the meeting would. Um, Rhys uh, Williams here is from East London. He's going to be speaking for 35 minutes and then there'll be time for questions and discussion. Okay, thank you. Um, well, as the title of the meeting suggests, um, accumulation is absolutely a uh, central feature of capitalism and it's what gives uh, the capitalist system its uh, dynamism. Um, there's been um, huge uh, technological advances and advances in uh, productive uh, capacity under capitalism, which far surpass uh, anything uh, seen under previous uh, under previous systems. Um, the speed at which change occurs is really quite staggering. Um, if you take um, the example of smartphones, ten years ago, uh, smartphones didn't really exist. They were maybe entering the market in some very kind of basic. Uh, basic form, but if you, you know, most people hear the camera on their smartphone is now um, much more powerful than, you know, a kind of standard digital camera uh, t 10 years ago. Um, so, and there's constant pressure on the capitalist class to uh, accumulate uh, more and more, and it's this really that, um, that gives the, that creates this dynamism uh, within, um, within the system. But, this pressure to accumulate is also the thing that makes uh, capitalism such an unstable system and one that's prone to uh, crisis. Uh, also, when we talk about um, when we talk about accumulation, we're talking about the vast uh, inequalities that are, that are present uh, in in our society, um, the concentration of property, of wealth, uh, of goods, uh, and of money in the hands of a tiny minority of the, of the population. Um, you know, there's huge and almost uh, unimaginable un uh, uh, wealth. Um, Bill Gates, the, the richest man on the planet, is worth um, $81 billion. That's his, his own personal uh, worth. Um, the, uh, if you take a company, uh, the, uh, in 2015, the um, annu annual revenue of, of Apple was uh, 233 million, uh, uh, sorry, 233 billion 715 million uh, US dollars. Uh, this is an incredibly, you know, staggering amount of, of wealth that, that are concentrated in the hands of a, of a, of a tiny uh, percentage of the, of the population. So, in this meeting I want to talk about uh, what accumulation is and, and why it is central to, to the capitalist system. Uh, of production. Um, <clears throat> what makes a society that is organi organized, uh, what makes a capitalist society uh, different from all previous uh, societies uh, is, that, is that profit is the driving force uh, of the system. Um, under uh, feudalism, um, uh, there was a kind of an inbuilt limit to the degree to which um, people could be exploited. So the serfs, the people who are at the, at the bottom of the pile, um, you know, if you're the lord of the manor, you could, you, you know, you could say uh, to them, two days a week, uh, everything that you produce on your plot of land is going to go to me, um, to providing uh, my cattle, to providing my uh, banquets and horses, etc. Uh, but once all that kind of um, need is uh, is satisfied. Then what's the real incentive to uh, to, to keep squeezing the people below you, uh, who you rely on to, to produce all the goods? So um, under uh, under feudalism, um, pr production is for the lord's uh, personal uh, consumption. Uh, under capitalism, this is different. Under capitalism, there's a drive to accumulate uh, more and more uh, in a in a lim potentially uh, limitless. Um, way. Uh, under capitalism, commodities are produced in order to be sold on the market uh, uh, for a profit. So this is uh, not all a system that's based on producing uh, things in order to satisfy human needs, uh, but on uh, what price they can fetch on the market and how much money they can make uh, for, for the capitalist. So um, why is this the case? What is, why is it that the system is so uh, dependent on um, profit. Um, well, capitalism has two uh, 
two real key defining uh, features. Uh, first of all, the division into two fundamental classes, into uh, the capitalist class that uh, owns the means of production and the working class that uh, the only thing that they own is their own ability to work and that they uh, are therefore forced to, uh, to go out and work um, for, for the capitalists and the capitalists use that situation to, uh, to uh, generate a surplus value um, by exploiting the workers who have no other option but to sell uh, their labour. Um, the second key feature of capitalism is competition uh, between rival, uh, rival members of the, of the capitalist class. Um, I don't really want to spend too long on the first, on the first point uh, as it's been covered uh, very extensively in the first um, in the first meeting in this course, uh, but it's, uh, I do want to say a bit about it because it's really quite uh, key to understanding the rest of, of what I'm going to what I'm going to talk about. Um, so, the only source of uh, of profit for the capitalist, the only source of value um, in in this in the capitalist system, is the exploitation of human labour. Um, the only thing that produces new value is, is, is labour. Uh, when a capitalist pays a worker wages, um, what they're buying is their potential to work, uh, what Marx called um, their labour power. Um, so when a capitalist employs someone for, for one day, uh, what they're doing is they're buying that person's uh, ability to labour for, for that one day. And, um, then the, the, the boss is free to uh, use that in, in any way they see fit, it, 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 to put them to actual work in any, uh, in any way that they um, choose. Um, but the cost to the capitalist of buying that person's ability to labour is less than the value that can be produced by a worker in, during the course of, uh, of a working day. Um, and obviously anything produced in that day belongs to the capitalist um, for, for him or, or her to, uh, to sell uh, as, they, as they wish. Um, so the labour of, of the worker uh, has added uh, value to the commodity um, that they've produced uh, and, um, and then that commodity is now the property of, of the capitalist. Um, so uh, so when that uh, commodity is sold uh, on, the, on the market, uh, the capitalist then uh, realises the uh, surplus value contained in that commodity uh, in the form of money uh, and generates um, a profit. Um, and so when the capitalist uh, takes this surplus value that's been generated and uh, ploughs it, uh, it back into the process of production, um, reinvests it uh, to, towards the generation of more surplus value. Uh, this is what Marx called the process of uh, of accumulation. Um, so on to on the second uh, key feature of, of capitalism, the competition between capitalists. Uh, this means that um, there's a constant pressure to increase profits and to squeeze more out of the uh, out of the workforce. Um, it doesn't really matter uh, how an individual boss is kind of uh, is disposed to to his to his workforce. Um, they may feel that out of the kindness of their heart, they want to benignly uh, increase uh, increase the pay of their of their workers. Um, but the problem with that is that their rivals will not will not do that, um, and they would make less profit uh, because the share of surplus value. Um, going to workers uh, rather than to, to company profits will be more than their rivals uh, and ultimately um, they, will be, uh, they will be driven out of, of business. So every boss is, ex is forced to exploit uh, more to drive up surplus value to increase profits um, because of competition from other, from other capitalists. Um, so the pursuit of profit is what drives uh, uh, capitalism forward. Um, I mean, let's look again at, uh, at feudalism for, for a comparison. Um, if you're a peasant and you, you have a goat uh, and you want to exchange it 
for a pail of milk, uh, then you're exchanging one uh, useful, one commodity, one useful commodity for another. Uh, in, in Marxist terms, one use value for another uh, use value. Um, if there is money involved in that exchange, um, it's used to, to facilitate the exchange of one use value for another use value uh, and, that, and nothing more. But if you're a capitalist, then things are, are quite different. Um, you buy a commodity in order to sell it at a higher price uh, and so get more money flowing back to you than you originally uh, spent. Um, your aim in buying a commodity is to sell it uh, for more than you paid than you paid for it, and therefore generate a profit. So there, therefore, if you're a capitalist, you what you're interested in is the exchange value of a commodity, uh, rather than uh, rather than the use uh, rather than the use value of a commodity. So that's the the opposite way round to the simple process of exchange, where a commodity is exchanged for another. Um, and this is what this is what Marx called the circulation uh, of capital. Um, and Marx defined capital uh, as value that's set in motion in order to uh, expand, um, in order to generate an, an incremental increase on the amount that was, uh, that was originally um, laid out. Um, there's no uh, qualitative difference um, between the amount of money that, that was there in the, at the start of the process uh, and the amount of money that's there at the end of the, of the process. Um, if you exchange uh, a goat for some milk, then there's a, qu a clear uh, qualitative difference there. But if you're, um, the whole point of the process is to generate uh, money, then the, the, the only difference is in uh, quantity. Um, so you can see that this, um, the logic of this, uh, of this process uh, is, is the potentially infinite um, accumulation of more and more money, uh, of more and more, um, of more and more capital. Um, Marx uh, described, described the process um, in this way. <clears throat> Fantastically bent on making value expand itself, uh, he, the capitalist, ruthlessly forces the human race to produce for production's sake. Accumulation for the sake of accumulation. Production for production's sake. Um, so the process of accumulation uh, requires the capitalists to reinvest uh, a portion of their profit uh, into further into further rounds of uh, of production. Um, capitalists are always looking for ways uh, to invest that will increase productivity uh, and allow them to increase the uh, the amount of commodities that they can produce in, in a given uh, period of time and, and and thereby undercut their undercut their competitors. Um, so what they will do then is uh, invest in, um, in constant capital uh, rather than variable capital. Um, Marx uh, said that uh, capital is divided up into, into two portions, into a portion called constant capital, uh, that is um, machinery, factories, computers, offices, etc. And this is called constant capital um, because its value doesn't change, it, 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 it remains constant. And variable capital, that is investment in, uh, in workers, in, in human living labor. And this is variable capital because this is capital that's uh, capable of, of expanding its value, that's capable of increasing um, uh, value. Um, so uh, let's take an, an example. Um, a baked bean company might use the profits from selling two million cans of beans in one year to buy a machine that allows you to produce uh, two million band, uh, uh, cans of beans in, in one month. Um, what's happened here is that um, the labor of all those people who work in the factory uh, uh, has generated a surplus value that's been appropriated by, by the capitalist and then put back into the process uh, of uh, of production. Um, so this this kind of has two effects really. The first effect is to uh, is that during the process of accumulation, um, workers' labour is constantly converted into capital. Um, if you're a boss, you might think that you have this factory here, and uh, you know that's kind of fixed, and that's what allows you to generate a profit. But in Marxist terms, 
it doesn't really matter on one level how uh, value is expressed. It could be expressed in, in a factory, in profits, in um, uh, the portion of, uh, of, of value that goes back to pay workers' wages. What matters is um, that all that, all, that, uh, all that capital is uh, part of, 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 the, of the process of, um, uh, I'm sorry, all that uh, uh, capital is, um, is a surplus value, is generating uh, a surplus uh, 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 value. Um, so uh, labor, the labor of the worker doesn't just produce uh, for the capitalist surplus value in the, in the form of money, but a portion of this surplus value goes back into the next round of production, uh, goes back into re reproducing the means of production, uh, into factories, into, into offices, um, and then the worker is then put back to work again um, uh, in, in, those, uh, in those factories, in those offices, in order to continue uh, the, pro the process for, for another cycle. Um, as Marx said, the worker himself is, uh, constantly produces objective wealth uh, in the form of capital, an alien power that dominates and exploits him. Um, so the theft of, uh, of the fruits of previous rounds of unpaid labour is crucial in allowing the process of accumulation uh, to continue. Um, Marx again, the ownership of past unpaid labour is thenceforth the sole condition for the appropriation of living unpaid labour on a constantly uh, increasing scale. Um, the more the capitalist has accumulated, uh, the more he is able to uh, accumulate. Um, so the process of accumulation, um, of using, uh, of using um, capital in order to generate more capital, uh, is robbery. Um, robbing workers of the wealth that they have produced uh, and using that stolen wealth in order to work them harder, in order to generate more profit, uh, in order to reinvest in further rounds of production, kind of uh, ad infinitum, really. Um, so all the, um, all the factories, all the offices, all the computers and machinery uh, that's, in, that's inside of those workplaces, um, and also all the profits that they've generated uh, the, the workers have generated by working them uh, ends up in, in the hands uh, of, of the capitalist. This is, this is the, the first effect. Um, the second effect um, is that there's an increase in the ratio uh, of constant capital uh, to variable uh, capital. Um, so uh, there's two ways that a capitalist can invest in order to generate more surplus value. Uh, they can simply buy more of the same thing. Um, they can buy another factory uh, that's an exact duplicate of the first and employ an another workforce that's exactly, um, that's exactly uh, the same as, as the first uh, workforce. And that's one way that, that a capitalist can hope to, to generate more, more value. Um, the second way is that they can invest in, in uh, new technology um, uh, and new machinery that speeds up uh, the process of production. Um, there's a constant need to bring in new and better plant and machinery uh, and invest in new technology uh, that increases productivity. Because as, as, rival, uh, as rival firms, as rival groups of capitalists compete with one another, uh, they're always looking to undercut, undercut each other and gain a competitive advantage. Um, so there's a, a constant revolutionising of the means of production as capitalists seek to gain a competitive advantage and, and undercut um, one another. Um, and I should stress that when we talk about increased uh, productivity, um, what we're talking about is increased uh, productivity of, of labour. Um, new machinery uh, is brought in and that allows uh, the worker to be uh, more productive, uh, allows a worker to produce uh, more of a, of a commodity in a given time that, than they previously uh, could. Um, this obviously benefits the individual <laughs> capitalist that is invested in that particular piece of machinery. Um, they are able to sell uh, their, their products more cheaply than, than the standard price uh, and yet still make uh, a profit. Um, however, 
when the technology becomes widespread uh, in, in, in the system, um, all uh, capitalists, all firms start to sell their goods at a new, uh, a lower price. Uh, and so the average price of the product falls. Um, as I said at the start, the uh, labour of, of living people uh, is the only thing that produces new value for the system. Uh, specifically, uh, the labour of, of the working class that produces surplus value uh, that's appropriated by, by, by the capitalist class. Um, so the investment that a capitalist makes, um, that is to say the amount of surplus value that they plough into new rounds, uh, rounds of production, uh, is split between uh, the amount of money that they invest in machinery and technology um, in, in constant capital and the amount of money they invest in, in, in variable capital. Or to put it in, in terms of labour rather than capital, the amount of, uh, of dead labour increases in comparison uh, to the amount of, uh, of, of living, of, of living labour, the amount paid um, uh, towards uh, machinery increases in terms of the amount uh, paid um, in, in wages. Um, a, a piece of machinery on its own, say a forklift truck, is absolutely incapable of, of producing uh, new value. Um, it, it can't do anything uh, without people uh, consciously using it uh, in order to carry out a particular piece of, of productive uh, activity. And so um, as the drive to accumulate uh, goes on, a capitalist is forced to invest more of their profits in new machines, uh, in computers, in uh, robots, in all the things that do not generate surplus value. Um, and this proportion of the investment uh, 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 of the investment that the capitalist makes increases over the uh, proportion uh, spent on, on labour. Uh, which is the only thing that, that is capable of, of, generating, uh, of generating new value. So the ratio of dead labour to living labour increases, um, which is what Marx called the, the organic composition of, of capital. Um, and this, uh, this has the effect of decreasing uh, the rate of profit. Um, this, is kind of, this is different to the overall uh, amount of profit. Um, the amount of profit that a company makes can still be staggeringly high, um, but this is due to the overall uh, a, a level of investment b being incredibly, incredibly high as well. Um, so as the process uh, of accumulation progresses, uh, capitalists invest, uh, invest more in constant capital uh, uh, and, and the ratio increases. And, um, Capitalists will only invest uh, if they if they think they can make um, a profit, um, and if the rate of if the rate of profit is low, then then they will not uh, they will not invest. And this is kind of what we what we see at the moment. Um, you can see a huge hoarding of wealth by by um, incredibly rich individuals and by uh, and by firms because they don't think that there's a chance of investing that that money. Uh, in a way that they can that they can make a profit. <clears throat> um, so at the set, uh, so there's there's you see a huge expansion of um, in financial markets in um, in non-productive um, areas um, and all all kinds of speculative uh, ventures. In the uh, in the hope of, of making uh, a quick uh, of, of making a quick um, book, because there's there's not uh, a way that um, the capitalists see to, to make um, a healthy enough uh, a, a return a, a healthy enough profit um, by investing in, uh, in um, in in production, and as we can see very clearly from the last several years, um, uh, this tendency for profit rates to fall. Um, for capitalists to hoard or to ref refuse to invest or to put their money into, into speculative ventures is what makes the system so unstable and so uh, prone to crisis. And this is going to be um, covered a lot, a lot more uh, in, a, in a lot greater depth in the next uh, meeting of, of this course. Um, but uh, there are things that a capitalist can do uh, in order to uh, counteract this tendency. Uh, of, of, of the rate of profit to fall. Um, 
uh, bosses can increase uh, the rate of exploitation. <coughs> uh, this can be done by uh, increasing the intensity of work, by speeding up production lines, or um, if you're working on a computer, by um, monitoring the amount of, of keystrokes that, uh, per, per minute that a worker is required to make, uh, or it can be done by increasing uh, the length of, of the working day. Um, the other way that, that, that uh, the rate uh, that the rate of exploitation be, can be increased is by simply uh, cutting, uh, cutting wages. Um, both these, uh, uh, both these uh, measures mean that um, the amount of work done by the worker for free, um, uh, oh, that is over and above the cost of reproducing their labour power, um, it, it, that amount of, of work uh, increases and so the uh, amount of surplus value going to the capitalist uh, increases. Um, there are uh, limits to um, the effectiveness of, the, of these measures. Um, it's not possible to, for example, cut a worker's wages to zero. Uh, there's a certain amount that a worker needs in order to adequately uh, feed and clothe and house themselves uh, in order to be able to go back into work uh, the next day uh, and perform uh, a productive, uh, productive day's work. Um, similarly with increasing the intensity of work, uh, actually relatively er early on um, in uh, the development of capitalism, um, Boss has worked out that if you, if you push workers past a certain point, uh, then um, it becomes counterproductive. Uh, the workers actually become uh, less, less productive uh, because, they're, because they're so uh, tired. Uh, so there's limits to, to, uh, to increasing uh, the rate of exploitation. Um, another thing uh, that counteracts the tendency of the rate of profit to fall is the uh, cheapening of, uh, of machinery, the cheapening of constant, um, of constant capital. Um, when productivity increases, uh, means that mean that commodities become cheaper. This also uh, holds true for those commodities that are used in, in the productive process. Um, for example, uh, computers, which are absolutely u ubiquitous in, in modern uh, production, um, have drastically reduced in, in price uh, since, their, since their introduction. Um, but this is not necessarily to the benefit of, of, of every capitalist. Um, if you're the first um, firm to invest uh, in a piece of machinery that costs a million pounds and, and will last for 20 years, and a year later your rival um, uh, is able to uh, buy the same piece of machinery for 200,000 pounds due to uh, increases in, uh, increases in uh, productivity, um, that doesn't really help you. Uh, also, in, from the point of view of the system overall, uh, the £800,000 that's been saved by your rival uh, still has to be invested uh, somewhere else in order to seek a profit, uh, again, uh, continuing uh, the process of accumulation uh, and, decre and decreasing uh, uh, profit rates. So, there are things that capitalists can do to counteract this tendency, but there are also uh, limits to, to their effectiveness. And ultimately, um, the only thing that, that, can, um, that can really uh, kind of uh, 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 that can put a stop to this, this tendency is a crash, is a slump that, that clears out unproductive uh, firms and unproductive sectors of, of the economy as they go uh, bankrupt. But again, that's something that's going to be covered uh, uh, in, the, in the next meeting in this, uh, in this course. Um, so, Really, to sum up, I think that um, accumulation is what drives the system to produce these incredible uh, inequalities of wealth, um, and that's you know obviously understanding that process is something that's absolutely vital if we want to take on uh, and 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 and, uh, and and challenge that. Um, the slogan, we are the 99%, I think really points to um, the fact that um, there's a tiny uh, proportion of the population that controls all the wealth uh, and decides how that wealth is used to the benefit uh, of themselves rather than to the benefit 
of the uh, of the um, uh, of the vast majority. And understanding that process and challenging it is really is really key if we want to fight for a world uh, the, the, where production is based on servicing people's needs rather than generating profit for a, for a tiny few. So I have one uh, question. You said the difference between capitalism and previous societies was the profit. So um, I would like to ask, I would think that the difference between capitalism and previous societies is that the manner of accumulation and the manner of exploitation is hidden and not visible. So in feudalism, it was obvious that there was a suppressor and uh, he, he took the wealth away from the peasants. In capitalism, people work hard and somehow the wealth goes somewhere else and is in the banks and is with some millionaires or billionaires and nobody knows how they really got to it. So uh, maybe you could uh, say something about that. Um, yeah, just have to go at answering the question about constant capital and variable capital. I know people can see we put it up here as well actually because we're trying to get a bit of continuity through these courses, but constant capital really is your raw materials, your machinery, technology, plant and all those sorts of things. And your variable capital is your labour, your people coming to work. The reason why we split the two up is because if you, as a boss, you buy a computer for your service industry, for example, that's your constant capital in the service sector, yeah? If you buy that computer, you've got to expect that computer to have a shelf life, I don't know, three, four, five years maybe, whatever it will be, yeah? You know exactly what it is that you're buying with that. It's a constant uh, level of value that that piece of machinery is going to bring into your business. When your worker comes in and sits down and uses that machine, you might pay them £200 a week to come in and use that machine. What they generate using the constant capital and using the telephones and coming into your office is way beyond that level of value. And therefore, that's the difference between variable capital and constant capital. So in the service sector, they still use constant capital because they're buying up, you know, you have to go out, I didn't think industrial estates where they've got these huge call centres and stuff like that. You know, you think of certain cities, I know, like Leeds, for example, massively expanded because of the banking sector and financial that are moving up there and so on. But constant and variable capital are embodied in commodity production in all areas of capitalism, including the service industry. I just wanted to um, follow on from, from what Joe was saying, really, about, um, about how you find, you know, all of these, these sort of things in any industry because I'm a teacher myself and you'd think well how does this sort of thing how can it possibly apply in a, in a, in a school where you're working and, and I've, that's why I found it interesting when Reese was talking about the ways in which um, capitalists speed up production lines and things like that I was having a really interesting conversation with someone in the bar last night um, who works in a call centre and he was saying that they do all sorts of things in his um, workplace to try and get the maximum amount of productivity out of the workers, like monitoring them, you know, timing their toilet breaks, things like this, monitoring every single tiny bit of their time while they're at work to get squeeze the most out of them possible. And I thought that was really interesting because as a teacher, we can see these same methods actually now creeping into our schools. So I gave the example of... Um, under um, sort of health and safety, most schools now are, are locked during the day and you have to have some sort of fob to get in. In my school, we found out one day that when my um, colleague was late, he was called into the head teacher's office to explain why he was late. He wanted to know how she found that out. She looked at his key fob record when he fobbed into work that morning. And we found out that, in fact, all of our key fobs were assigned to our name so that they could monitor us coming in and out of work to see who was late and who wasn't. So what's really interesting is now we're increasingly seeing this as the pressures on schools come, you know, their budgets are being cut, they're increasingly trying to find ways to get more work out of people to cover those gaps. And then what we're seeing is all those techniques that capitalists use in, in, in other industries coming in to sort of exploit workers um, even more. 
and um, and it's interesting the whole deprofessionalisation of teaching that is going on. You know, it's becoming increasingly um, sort of de-skilled, and as it's as we see that, then we're also seeing the same method of kind of suppressing workers as well. So I think that's a really important point to make because it shows that actually, even though we might work in different professions in different industries, we do all suffer the same way. You know, we're all exploited as workers, and therefore. You know, when we're fighting for better rights at work and we're fighting exploitation as teachers are, we're out on strike on, on Tuesday. I think it's important because it's the same fight for all workers because we're all facing the problems that are caused by the constant drive for accumulation that Reese has been talking about. Um, apparently, more and more people these days are uh, <coughs> self employed. Uh, which I'm not actually, but this is kind of an academic question. I just wonder in the in the world of self-employment, uh, does the same model fit uh, the, this model that we have here of uh, <coughs> uh, accumulation and so on, or is a separate economic uh, model required? Or to put that another way, can you exploit yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm with you 90% of the way, just until you get to the bit where you're saying that. For, where, the way I'm thinking about it is, in Asda, for example, you've got the self-service checkout. Mm -hmm. And how, uh, the, the only thing that I don't quite get is how the, that, oh, over the long term, doesn't um, have an in, uh, the same level of increase of productivity. In, in the set, if, if, that, if that's what I'm saying, how that inevitably reduces the, the productivity when, the, when because it's not got the worker on the tail or something like that, or whether I'm thinking about it in the wrong way, how mechanisation tends to reduce because that's I've seen the graphs and things about how productivity and things are going down, and the the amount the profitability is the word I'm looking for is going down as you remove the people over time. But I don't, I'm still looking for the missing link that I'm not got there, so that's it. try and answer that really because paradoxically I, I worked on a self-service checkout for three years <laughs> um, and I suppose this is one of the weird things about self-service check most people who've been on a self-service checkout will notice that it's not very often you successfully use one without needing help do you know what I mean um, but it's an interesting point really that uh, Morrison's last year released that they're actually going to be replacing all of the self-service checkouts in their uh, stores with uh, regular checkouts again uh, actually because they're finding that not because you know they've decided they do want to employ more people or anything like that but what they've found is that they're losing uh, £180,000 a year through uh, theft on the checkout on the self-service <laughs> checkouts uh, I'm sure no one here has ever <laughs> has ever done that but I suppose um, what, it, what is central to Marx though is the idea that uh, well, Reese went through. Uh, value isn't produced by machinery; it's produced by uh, labour. Do you know what I mean? It's produced by people uh, working and so on. You can have a beautiful factory and uh, not have a bit anyone in it, and it produces absolutely no profit whatsoever. And the thing is, is that as capitalists invest more in, I mean, capitalists don't accept Marx in general, right? Do you know what I mean? So, as they invest in more productive machinery, um, what they don't do is they don't say, oh, this is fantastic, uh, we've now got a machine that can do labour three, uh, three times, that, you know, it's three times more productive, therefore we're going to keep everyone's pay the same, but we're going to make them do a third of the hours. What they do is they lay off workers. Uh, and what that means is that uh, the amount of money that is invested in, uh, const well, in constant capital compared to variable capital means that uh, they end up with uh, less and less uh, labour power, and as a result of that, um, less ability to make profit. You know what I mean? So I suppose that's trying to address the tendency rate of profit fall, but also to say that, well, self-service checkouts are on the way out because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's not the only reason. You know what I mean? But it's to say that actually, in the re in. Uh, in the like supermarket industry, there is a recognition that they are inadequate 
in attempting to uh, uh, generate more profit because actually they're much slower, they're clunkier, and, and, and so on. I have only a very short question, and that is, is there any idea of how these formulas might look in socialism? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try and answer that other question. Apologies for getting up twice. But the question about supply, supply side of the economy. We're not dealing with the supply side of the economy. What we're trying to deal with is capitalism as a whole, as a system of commodity production. Right? And basically what you find with bourgeois economics is that it attempts to, and this is what comes through people like Adam Smith and David Ricardo and the classical bourgeois economists, is that what you have in an economy is demand, and because of demand, then people supply, right? And that basically, I don't know if people have seen these graphs, if you did these graphs in like economics things, here's the demand, here's the supply, and in the middle, where it crosses over, this is where the price is set, yeah? So if you have an increase in demand on something, it will increase the price of a commodity. Suddenly the supply of the, that commodity increases, the price will start to decrease. This is the magic formula, the price mechanism, the invisible hand of the market that determines what commodities cost, how they're produced, and so on and so forth. The problem is, is that demand doesn't really equal supply. Because in reality, the demand for food in some parts of sub-Saharan Africa is really bloody high. The supply of food is not actually the same thing. Why? Because it's not what we would call effective demand, i.e. it's not backed up by cash. Right? So there is an issue here in terms of even dealing with an economy and just breaking it down into supply and demand. And really what Marxist economics tries to do is to challenge that notion in bourgeois econo economics and to actually put a different picture as to how commodity production takes place, what it is that really gives value to products and really determines prices. And one of the things which we're obviously saying is, is that it is the presence of living labour, the labour that people put into when they work on machines, this is what is determining the value of a product and ultimately then determining the price of a product at the same time. The technology examples that Reese used around prices, for example, are very, very good. And I'll tell you why, because I remember something like maybe 15 years ago, my dad may have given me one of these old, do you see these? They were called Scion organisers. They were <laughs> the height of technology, mate, right? Because you could type in on a keypad into a small thing what your diary was going to be for that day. That little organiser would cost about £450 at the time. Right? That, in comparison to my iPhone now, my iPhone now is almost the same price, the scope of what my iPhone can do is unbelievable. What has increased in the production of this stuff is an increase in technology, an increase in constant capital has gone in, in that investment in there. It has enabled the, the capitalists to lower the amount of labour they put into that product and therefore it has reduced price. The self-service tills, why get rid of labour? Yeah, why? Why put a machine instead of labour? Because labour is much more expensive for the capitalist. They want more of the machinery. But the problem for them is, the more they invest in the machinery, the, pl the proportion, the variable capital, the labour that gives the value and the profit that goes into that good, it decreases. But they can't avoid and they can't escape the cycle because <coughs> the accumulation and competition drives them to compete with other capitalists across the system as a whole, how they operate, is not beneficial for the whole of the capitalist class. Anyway, I'm going to um, uh, On this point specifically, you know, companies today hire futurologists, which I always found very kind of surreal in a way. Uh, however, people make money out of it, and what they do, they do this research and development or whatever, and they all meet in like uh, boardrooms and they talk about what is going to happen in 30 years just to just to foresee that which is of course I don't think that Marx could imagine that like a futuro futurologist I don't know I'm, I'm just asking okay. um, a quick question or well, two questions really am I right in thinking that um, Marxist economics is relatively uninterested in prices as opposed to value of commodities. And secondly, is there any kind of simple correlation between the value of a commodity and its price? Uh, 
Okay, uh, I'll let uh, Reese sum up. Uh, okay, um, I want to start by talking about the service industry um, because I think, I think it's quite interesting. Some people mentioned it in, in, the, in, the, in the previous um, session. Um, I think the important thing here is that Marx defined a, um, a, use, a, a use value as anything that people find useful. That doesn't necessarily mean food or shelter or, um, or clothing. That, that can be uh, anything. For example, I um, work for a company that um, puts in-flight entertainment systems onto planes. Now, where's the use value there? Is you know, someone wanting to watch a movie while they're on a flight? You could quite easily argue maybe they could read a book instead. Um, th th it, does, it, it can be anything that people will, are able to find um, useful. Um, what, what matters to the, to the capitalist um, is the ability um, to, uh, to generate a profit by, uh, e by exploiting the difference that they can, that they can get away with, in, with paying wages from the amount that they make, um, that they, th from the amount that they're able to um, sell their, um, sell, uh, the, their, their commodity um, for. Um, uh, to go back to, to the question about why profitability uh, would go down with an increased uh, amount of, uh, of machinery. Um, value, it, human labor is the only thing that uh, produces um, value, uh, that produces new value uh, for the system. There is, there is uh, value contained within uh, constant capital. Um, th th that's been produced by previous rounds of production, by um, by people um, uh, labouring on those on those commodities in order to produce them. But that value is then remains constant after that point. Um, the only new, the only source of new value to the system is human labour, and that's because the capitalist is able to pay less for what Marx called labour power. Um, than for uh, the amount uh, than is than the value that's created by uh, in the course of a working day once the capitalist has, has bought that uh, labour um, power. Um, so this kind of this goes on to the question um, or the comment that, that someone made about um, exploitation being hidden under capitalism. I completely agree with that. Um, see. Uh, a worker and a capitalist, they first meet in, in, in the marketplace <clears throat> in, uh, in, in the exchange of commodities. A worker sells their ability to labour to the capitalist um, in exchange for wages. Um, but, the, but the wages that are, that are paid are for the reproduction of labour power, the, the um, food, uh, clothing, shelter, that goes into um, reproducing that person's ability to go and perform an another day's labour. That's less than the amount of value that's, that, that's produced in the course of the, of the actual uh, la labour performed. Uh, and so therefore, if you're investing much more in, uh, in constant capital, the, where, where the value is unchanging, uh, and less in variable capital, um, where, where, uh, which is the only part of capital that, that is capable of expanding. Therefore, that, that's why, um, the, uh, that's why uh, profitability uh, will, will decline. Um, what, what should I talk about next? I think maybe the demand, um, the, the, the kind of demand side of, of the economy. Um, and do, do capitalists kind of look to, um, you know, how, how they kind of think, how they think about how they work out uh, where the, where the demand's going to be? Um, yeah, uh, of course, uh, you know, the capitalists will spend time thinking about um, what, uh, what people want, what's going to sell, um, etc., and invest, invest a lot of money in, in that process. Um, and that, that's, that's true. But I think the important thing to... Um, 
to, 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 to realise is that consumption is an auxiliary part of the process of production, of the process of, of, of accumulation. Um, what, you know, what, what matters is, um, is, is the accumulation of, of capital and uh, of uh, reinvesting surplus value into further rounds of, um, of, of production. And, and the consumption of the, of the commodities produced under that system uh, is, is not the, uh, the, driving, the driving force uh, 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 of the system. It's, it's, more, it's a necessary part, but it's an auxiliary part of that, of that process um, of, uh, of production. Um, what else do I want to uh, talk about? Uh, yeah. Um, so prices and and um, value, um, I think that prices uh, will fluctuate uh, up and down, but around um, a, a, a value uh, that's determined by um, the amount of socially necessary uh, uh, labour time that's gone into producing uh, that's gone into producing a certain uh, commodity. So the amount. Of, of labor that on average it takes in order to produce a, a commodity is what determines the, uh, the, the value of that commodity. Um, the, uh, the, the actual price can fluctuate up and down but it will be, a, be around a value that's determined uh, by the amount of socially necessary uh, labor time that, that's gone into, uh, that's gone into um, its, um, its, its production. And I guess uh, I should end really by the question of what, what would these formulas look like uh, under, under socialism? I mean, I have absolutely no idea what, what, these, uh, what this would look like. Uh, I think the, the idea is um, that what we want to do is, is kind of is kind of smash all this really and is, is fight for a world where there isn't uh, a proportion, where there isn't uh, the vast proportion of, 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 of the surplus value of wealth going to the sucked off in this way to, to the people at the, at the top and that we can fight for a world where, where the whole of the social product uh, goes, to the, goes to the people who produced it.